Isaiah 40, 28. It says, do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You come Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait up. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. The Lord will renew our strength. Let's continue to worship him today. And let's sing this song, What a Beautiful Name. You 
were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you are Christ What a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. He silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no right. can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus you have no rival you have no rival you have no equal now and forever our God reigns yours is the King the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, what a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. What a powerful name it is. And there is no name like yours, our Lord. And today, Lord, we just come humbly and approach your throne of grace to offer up our praise and worship with all of our hearts, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And I pray, Father God, that um, today you'll just give us a heart of worship, one that just longs to, to please you, to adore you, 
to lift up your name, especially, Lord, during this time of unrest. Help us to focus ourselves on you, because you are our God, our Father, in control of everything. Our hope and trust is in you. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we worship you. We profess your name, that you are Lord, Savior, and King. And may you be glorified today in each and every one of our lives as we worship you. Let's continue to worship him and let's sing. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you. Bail torn before you. He silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory. For you are a can stand against what a powerful name it is the name what a beautiful name what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing can stand against what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you today, our God, our King. We worship you, Jesus, and truly, truly, what a beautiful name it is. And I pray, Lord God, that, uh, that you receive our worship, Lord, uh, as a sweet-smelling aroma to you, that you find it acceptable. And Father God, just today, we want to lift up your name. We want to glorify you. And help us, Lord, just focus on you today, Lord God. Prepare us now as we um, prepare, Lord, for, to take part of the Lord's table and also as we prepare to listen to your word. May you open the eyes and the ears of our hearts, Lord. Give us wisdom and understanding and help us to receive your message today with joy and gladness and, uh, and applying it to our daily lives and putting it into action. I'm just praying, Lord God, for our pastor, that you be with him, that you grant him your special anointing, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, cover him in your most precious blood as he delivers us your word. And once again, Lord, we just want to thank you for everything, for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your love, your grace, and your mercy for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's prepare ourselves now to partake of the Lord's table. So if you can get your elements ready. Can everybody hear us? Amen, yes. loud and clear. Okay, uh, before we proceed to our communion, like uh, Pastor Jen mentioned, is there anyone who wants to thank the Lord? Yeah, I have uh, something to say. Okay, Hello. Pastor Noli. Can you hear us, Pastor Noli? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Yeah, this is uh, Marisa. Yeah, um, just a little background. You know, um, my friend from Genentech, uh, her name was Rebecca. Um, there was a time when she had asked uh, the church for prayer because um, she was having uh, dialysis. Uh, three times a week. And so we did pray for her, especially on our um, Sunday devotion. And then, so the time that we prayed for her, um, the following week, she told me, wow, it's like a miracle because my doctor now told me that she, he can't explain it, but I no longer need dialysis. And she was having dialysis like uh, three times a week. So, she was just so happy that she, one day she attended our church service and uh, gave that uh, specific testimony. Well, anyway, like two weeks ago, um, she sent me another message, this time asking uh, prayers for her friend, uh, Patricia. And uh, she said, my, my friend Patricia um, ha had bleeding in the brain. She had uh, surgery and now she's in a coma. And the doctor thinks that you know it's a there's a slim chance that she might even sur that she might survive you know very slim chance so she says please pray for her so I said sure I'll I'll ask the the church to pray for her as well so I talked to uh, brother John and had him uh, pray for her and included her in our um, uh, morning's uh, devotional prayer and then that same day. Um, she she texted me and she says, you know, your your prayers work. She says, she's she's awake. She's no longer in a coma, you know. And uh, she says, thank you so much, you know. And tell um, brother John, thank you for the prayer. And I said, sure, I'll, I'll let him know. And so, so as uh, with the church. So um, the following week, she says, um, even if she's out of the coma, she's like in and out, you know, like she's hardly responds to commands. So th they're having a, a problem with that because she's not responding too much on the, the commands. So she says, please continue to pray for her. So I said, sure, we will, you know. So again, I mentioned it to Brother John. He started praying for her and again, included her in our Sunday devotional prayer. And again, that same day, she said, Marisa, you're prayers your the prayers of the church are really working because this time she 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 was responding to the commands and in fact she even um, did a thumbs up you know so she says please continue to pray for her so right now we included her again in our prayer because she's still in the ICU you know because she has um, there's still uh, bleeding in her brain but uh, it's just um, a nice feeling that even if the doctor says that you know she probably won't make it I mean, little by little, we can see progress, and eventually, I'm I'm sure we're going to see uh, complete healing for her. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. 
praise the Lord for uh, His goodness. And uh, Sister Lillian also is uh, going to give her uh, testimony. Sister, Hello. yes, Sister Lilian. Ah, naririnig po niyo ako, naririnig po niyo ako. Opo. Oh, okay, so uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, meron po akong share na tungkol po ito sa, sa anak ko na nasa Minnesota. Kapon, kahapon po o doon, okay. tumawag po siya. Mama, uh, pag-pray niyo po kami, sabi niya gano'n. Ah, uh, malapit na po dito sa restaurant yung mga nagraraalis. Mama, natatakot po kami. Sabi ko kay Dylan, nak mag-pray ka lang, mag-pray ka lang. Mag-pray ka yo, bigay natin sa gan. Ah, uh, ayun po, nag-pray po ako na ang lagi kong prayer. Ingatan ng mga anak ko, bawat pangalan nila binabanggit ko sa gan. Tapos yung pong sabi ni Dylan, eh, pag-pray pa, the God. Ikaw na po ang bahala sa sambahayan ko. Ibig sabihin, lahat-lahat po sila agad. Ingatan mo po sila, Dylan. So, kahapon po ng umaga, tumawag po sa akin si Dylan. Sabi niya, mm. Mama, sabi niya, Mama, Thank you po sa prayer. Thank you po sa God. Alam niyo po, Mama, sabi niya ang ganun. Nilampasan lang yung building namin. Sabi niya ang ganun. Tapos po, yung riot nagsimula na naman pagkatapos po sa so building na yun, God. Ginuhitan lang po yung restaurant. Sabi niya ang ganun. Sabi ko yan, nung, nung, nung marinig ko po yun, nung magulgul na ako na iyak, kaya naroon ako si Pastor, si Sister Emma, Pastor Ogin, kaya ba, sabi ko, yung miracle po sa Diyos. Naalala ko yun, nabasa ko sa exercise ko pa paano iningatan ng God ang mga Israelites. Ginawa ko po niya yung kinadilan. Lumampas na. Kaya po, yung mga nagpipray po, sasagutin po tayong lahat ng God. Hintayin lang po natin. Hindi ko alam, hindi ko alam bakit ginagawa ako na living testimony ng God. Lagi na lang may problema. Pero... Lahat po siya rin ang nagsusol. Kaya nagtitank you po ako sa mga panalangit, mga kapatid. Alam ko, pinag-pray niyo din ako. Pinag-pray niyo sila, Dylan. Mahal si Dylan. Salamat po. Tapos magamat ano po, sabi sa mga lockdown, yung kanilang restaurant, kahit po, kahit po, order lang, nakakabenta po sila. Kaya salamat po sa God. Tulad po ng ano, sorry. totoo po yung yung tights. Mula nung magbalik loob na naman ako sa pagka-tights. Naging faithful. Tinatatatag po niya ang aking trabaho. Salamat po. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a Amen. Thank you, for Sister Lillian. Thank you. And uh, we, should, we should be happy. We should be happy. Amen. Kaya po ako umiyak dahil sa happy nga po ako. So, paano po nagbimirakel ang God? Siya po kasi ang nakakaalam sa bawat isa sa atin na nakakatalos ng ating, ng ating puso, ng ating isig. 
Kaya nagpupuri po ako sa, sa Diyos. Mm-hmm. Kaya nagpapasalamat. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is there, is there any more wants to anyone wants to thank the Lord? Okay, no one. Last call. Okay. So let's proceed to our communion. And let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for giving us uh, this day to gather in your name. We ask that may you, um, your name will be praised, your name will be exalted. And Father God, we pray that may you, uh, we know that you are in our midst and we ask that may you continue to move uh, in our hearts right now. And as we remember your love to us, your goodness, your faithfulness, we pray that may you always, your grace will always abandon to each one of us, O oh God. And um, as we remember your unconditional love 2,000 years ago that you sent your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins. And thank you, God, because through your mercy, through your grace, we are saved through our faith in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, as we remember what you did for us, we pray that may you cleanse us, Lord, forgive our sins. We pray that may you work in our lives continually until our redemption comes. We pray for our loved ones, Lord God. We pray that may you also work in their hearts and those who are not yet saved, open their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears so that they will understand your plan to each one of us. Father God, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life for us. That you died, you suffered, you died on the cross for our sins. You were, you were buried and after three days you rose from the dead. And you are now sitting at the right hand of God. And we thank you, Lord God, because you promised us that one day when the things, when the place in heaven is prepared you're coming back for us to take us home to take to be with you forever so dear god we pray that may you bless us as we remember the cup that symbolizes your blood lord jesus the bread that symbolizes your body that who suffered for us we pray this morning that as we connected Lord through this online gathering that you will bind us spiritually you will bind us with your love with your spirit and we pray that may you help us to become faithful to you until the coming of our Lord and Savior the Lord Jesus Christ so dear God we pray that for this bread and for this cup that we are going to receive Give it, may it give health and strength to our body. And especially for those who are sick right now, we pray for your healing. 
that you promise us by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. We know that every sickness and diseases are already healed right now. As you open up to everyone, Lord, your salvation, your, your goodness, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. We commit to you everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. receive from the Lord, what I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's all. Amen. Hallelujah. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's all then. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now 
of the curse of sin has no hold on me whom the sun set free oh is free in me now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled now the curse of cross oh that rugged cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee praise and honor Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord the big clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody is doing well and uh, I believe God is in control. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. And um, thank the Lord because uh, God is uh, giving me an opportunity to share His Word. And this morning, uh, let's open our Bible in the book of Acts chapter 16 in verse, uh, from verse 25 up to verse 30. Okay, let's minimize this. Okay. Uh, there you go. Okay. Okay, let's read. Let's read the, this uh, passage. In verse 25 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors 
flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Verse 27, the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners has or had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your goodness to us. Thank you for giving us this, this uh, freedom to worship you, this freedom to gather even though we are uh, still in quarantine and we're doing this online. But we thank you for the privilege, for the opportunity to study your word and to have fellowship, most of all, to enjoy your presence. So dear God, we pray that may you bless each one of us. And I declare that your blessings flows to each one who are in need right now. And we receive that blessings, Lord. Give us wisdom, understanding for your word. As we listen, as we meditate on it, on it, oh God, help us <clears throat> that every word of yours will be planted in our hearts that we will uh, um, that you will use it Lord God for us to equip us and uh, to strengthen us Lord God to empower us so dear God speak to us through your word and may the Holy Spirit be, our, uh, uh, be the one who will deliver this message to us I'm only as uh, your servant Lord God I pray for your anointing right now and uh, we declare that uh, your name will be praised. Your, your name will be glorified, O God. We give you the highest praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So a few days ago, uh, the news about the death of, we you know, this what's going on around us. The George Floyd went viral. People around the country gave their sympathy on his death and asked for justice. And we know that the, uh, this uh, police officer who killed him was uh, uh, charged. And uh, I heard it's a third degree murder, but we don't know. So that's why probably many people were not happy uh, for the result of the sentence. Uh, this passage that was uh, that we read from the scriptures is a story when uh, the apostle Paul and uh, his companion Silas uh, were thrown into prison. I believe that not everyone in prison is guilty of a crime. In this situation, Paul, Silas, and the jail guard were met with an extraordinary event in which they were connected by God through isolation. As the title of our message this morning, Isolation. Isolation. So some people <clears throat> want to isolate themselves from others. They keep themselves in the room and from, from there they connect with other people who do the same. For me, isolating ourselves with no, no good reason is unhealthy. Many people during this pandemic experience isolation to protect themselves and others. There are times that God allows isolations in our life and from that experience we learn a lot. Like the jail officer in this passage, he is similar to the police officer who works in the sheriff's department in our days, which they are the one who's in charge of the prisoners. So the story of God of, and, and what he did in the life of this jail guard was amazing. First, in this chapter, there were servants of God, who is Paul and Silas. They were arrested, they were beaten up and put into prison. And maybe we can ask, for what charge? In verse 20, it was mentioned that um, they 
were falsely accused of being a Jews and then throwing the city into an uproar by advocating customs and lawful to, for the Romans to accept or practice. But the real issue here is this. According to the, the passage here in, in verse 16 to 18, if we're going to take a look on verse 18, it says, uh, finally, Paul became so annoyed with this female slave. In verse 16, mentioned that this, when they were on their, on their journey or on their way to the place of prayer, they, they met this female slave who had a spirit or evil spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. So this, this female servants, she followed Paul and, and the rest uh, of those who are being with, with Paul and then shouting with these words, she shouted, this man are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. So she kept doing this, doing this, this, uh, this, this, this act of you know shouting, telling everyone this. These men are servants of the Most High God, uh, who are telling you the way to be saved. So she kept doing this, and for many days, and finally, finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And the Bible says, in that moment, in that moment, the Spirit left her. So why did Paul cast out the evil spirit from the female slave, even though it was, or she was telling the truth about, about them? You know, the message of the female servant is from the devil or from the evil spirit. And the evil spirit is not preaching the word of God, but pointing out who Paul and Silas are. Preaching the word of God is, means it, it's, it's pointing the people to God or to Christ. What, what, what the evil spirit is doing is he's tempting even the servants of God to brag who, who they are and not of who God is. So how can, how can we discern who is a false teacher? The false teacher is their, their preaching is not about Christ. And many preachers in our days is like, like that. It is self-centered. It is self-edifying. It's about I, me, my mine, myself, and what I want. So the same temptation to Eve that focus on herself when, when you try to fix your eyes to yourselves and, and not to, to God, you begin to be self-centered, doing your own will and not caring about others. In verse 19, we, we notice that when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. So many people are not happy when they see others freed from the bondage of the evil one or the devil, especially if it affects their means of earnings. When you used to own a grocery store you, and find out that uh, in the Bible it says, uh, the Lord is not pleased with uh, if you're selling items that harms people, you stop selling it. But those who don't understand, those who don't understand, uh, it will they it it will not be. They are not happy on your in your on your decision. So the owner of the female slave, who's in the business of fortune telling, was furious. He he when he found out that. Paul cast out the evil spirit from her. It is not just the owner of the female slave, but I believe also the evil spirit that was casted out 
who became out of business. And the evil spirit lost the female slave and no longer has, the, has authority over her. So Satan tempted the owner of the female slave to accuse Paul and Silas so they will be out of business too. And what is their business? The business of Paul and Silas is to proclaim the kingdom of God. Well, the spirit, the spirit or the evil spirit knows who are who the true servants of God are. The evil, the devil wants to make fun of every believer. But God gave us the authority to trample them. Since the church was born in the day of Pentecost, the devil is always trying to destroy the church. He's, he is always to, trying to destroy us. But the Lord Jesus made this claim about his church in Matthew 16, 18 says that the gates, even the gates of hell, the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Church, let me tell you this. God gave us the assurance that no one who truly belongs to Christ will ever enter Hades. Death, and, death has no power over us. And even the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. The devil is so angry with us because we are created in the image of God. As a matter of fact, the book of Matthew tells us the reason why. Because the reason why God created eternal, um, in Matthew 25 verse 41, the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So the, devil's, the devil is so jealous of us because in spite of becoming a sinner through Adam's disobedience, God offers us forgiveness through Jesus Christ that those who believe in him will have eternal life. So this is the reason why we always experience hardships in life. The devil wants to kill, to steal, to destroy, to destroy us. I just learned that George Floyd is a believer of Christ. If a believer died of, I believe, if a believer died of uh, immature death, it is the devil behind all of it. What the devil doesn't know that uh, is that when a Christian suffers, the more we get closer to God. Amen. That's why we are not afraid to die because we, as like Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. So the devil will give us false accusations, condemnations, and frustrations, but still, but still, we will overcome him. We Christians are not exempted of what is happening in this world. As long as we are still in this earthly body, we will experience the pain, the sorrow, sickness, and hardships and in life like those who haven't received Christ yet. So the point, that's only an introduction. The point that I'm, I want to deliver here is about the goodness of God. When we face isolation based in the scripture. So when you are isolated, the Bible says we need to spend more time with God. Amen? Spend more time with God. Spend more time with God. As you spend more time with God, it means that you pray unto God and give Him praise, like Paul and Silas did. In verse 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing to God, singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. About midnight. How many among us here, we sleep, we go to bed late? And let me ask you the reason why. Are you like Paul and Silas that you keep uh, yourself uh, awake until midnight because you are you're praying to God and you're singing praises to God? You give Him praise before you hit your bed. That's the last thing you did to pray and to give praise to Him. 
So when you are isolated, it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. Amen? If you study the word of God carefully, Paul and Silas were heading to the place of prayer. In verse 16, it says, we were going to the place of prayer when these things happened. So the devil doesn't want them to pray. And the devil doesn't want us to pray, church. Have you noticed that? When you are about to pray, there's interruption. There's, you know, hindrances. Like what they experience, the devil interrupts them. He put distractions on them and hindrances or hinder them to pray. Because he understands that when we spend more time in prayer, his works will be revealed. And the Holy Spirit, or by the Holy Spirit, and we will be aware of it. As Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. So when you are alone, talk to God because He is there with you. If you are spending most of your time in your room, I believe that's a biblical place to pray. In Matthew 6, verse 6 says, When you pray, you go into your room. You close the door, and then you pray to your Father. So when Jesus was on earth, his perfect place to spend time in prayer is at the Mount of Olives. And we called it Garden of Gethsemane. Where is your place of prayer? Do you have a place of prayer? So we should have a place of prayer, a place where we always, we, we, we isolated ourselves before the Lord, I mean before the, the world, and we spend more time with the Lord. So, but be careful. If you don't spend time with God in prayer, the devil, as the Bible says in First Peter chapter five, verse eight. So when you are you are in your isolation, make sure you spend more time in prayer. Because why? Because Satan can use your situation to be tempted. As the Scripture says, the enemy, our, our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So Paul and Silas not, uh, were not hindered by the situation to pray. They prepared that night as to what their plans, as to what their plans was. So even after they came out of the prison, they went to the place where they supposed to go in the first place. In, in Acts 16.40 says that after Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went out or they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. So when you are going to pray, stick to the plan. Stick to the plan no matter what. When, we, when, when, when the devil uh, hinders us you know, uh, you use that story on how God works to encourage others. So prayer is a spiritual fuel, our map, our communications with God during our journey here on earth. It is not the devil's work that we want to magnify, but what God has done in our lives. So there was a story of a tribe that when their son reach, reaches a teenage years, the child will be, will be brought into the forest to test his manhood by surviving overnight against the wild animals. So the father and the, and the son uh, began in, uh, their journey and reached the middle of the forest. The father started to blind fall the son as he was saying, you have to trust me, son. 
the rulers or I mean the rules uh, with the blindfold was it can only be removed the next day. So the boy heard different noises during the night, that night, and was fully aware of what could possibly happen. Morning came as uh, the son survived the test. He began to remove his blindfold. When he opened his eyes, he was surprised by what he saw. His father was there next to him. His father was actually with him the whole time that night, silently watching his son to make sure that his son was protected. Church, when you feel isolated and no one is around you, remember that God will always be there next to you. So pray to God and give him praise. And secondly, when you spend more time with God, remember this, that let others hear our prayers and praises to God. When you pray, when you give praise to God, when you give praises to him, let others hear it. Amen? So, you know what? The nicest thing that you, you can hear or that our ear can hear is someone is praying for us. Amen to that. I love when someone is praying for me. Maybe you can agree with that. I feel that I'm not alone with this battle and there is someone who cares for me. So God uses our prayers to reach out for others. When we pray, our prayer is mostly for others. The prayer and the singing of hymns to God by Paul and Silas were heard by some of the prisoners. You know, let others see and witness your situation right now because God will use it as your testimony to others. So don't hide your, don't hide your pains. Don't hide your troubles. Don't, don't hide your sufferings. Why? Because God uses our situation to remind us to pray for others who are in the same situation. Because why? This is the reason why. First Peter 5 verse 9, we know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. The same kind of sufferings. So when the believers suffer, it is just for a little while. Are you happy? Are you not happy with that? When we suffer, it's just temporary. It's just for a little while. And after that, God's, that, God, that God will reward us. You know, the greatest reward that we can receive is for the non-believers to be saved. We believers are willing to sacrifice our lives for the, for the Lord in order for the unsaved to be reached out. Last Friday, uh, in our Tagalog Bible study, someone asked, uh, what will happen to those who haven't reached out of the gospel? If this kind of question is coming from a believer, it is a question with concern. If we are concerned with those who haven't received Christ as their Lord and Savior, how much more God has most concern and love for them. As the Bible says, 2 Peter 3 9, not wanting God doesn't want us, doesn't, doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So God's heart for everyone is to come back to Him. You know, uh, when, when, when we saw the video of uh, this uh, police officer kneeling on the, the neck of the, of the George Floyd. Many people are, you know, condemning, cursing the, the police officer and have sympathy on George Floyd. As a believer of Christ, we should have sympathy to both. You know, when I found out, like what I said, that George Floyd is a Christian, a believer of Christ, 
it doesn't matter if he dies because he's going to heaven. But this police officer who killed him, we should pray for him that he will repent and know the Lord as his Lord and Savior. Because you know, in, in the eyes of God, every single soul is precious. Amen. So, God's heart for everyone is to come back to Him, to turn away from our wicked ways so that no one will perish. If you have the mind of Christ, you will have passion for the lost. What are you doing right now? To reach out your loved ones and the people that you know. Are you doing something so they, they will be reached out? So we are not yet done with COVID-19 and then there, there here another bad things happening around us. Have you noticed that? This protest, these riots that are going on around many states uh, as the result, uh, it, it turns to violence and, and act, I believe this is acts or, you know, of the evil or acts of uh, the devil or acts of evil. So tr truly, people need the Lord. And our only action is to pray for these people. I believe no Christians are there rioting. No, be no believers of Christ are there protesting with, with violence. Because when we want to protest, we do it in our knees. We pray, we pray, because prayer can change anything. Like the Apostle Paul, he said, because he knew that the, the, the people need the Lord, this is his mind, his heart. In, in 1 Corinthians 9, 9 to, 19 to 23, he says, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. Amen. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I, I can be, uh, maybe I, I, I can get involved myself in, in that, you know, protesters. So I, I can express my freedom. You can do that. But, your goal is to reach out someone so that you can share Christ to them. Like Paul was doing, he made himself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. He said to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. Verse 21, to those not having the law, the law I became like one, not having the law. Though I'm not free from, the, from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law. So as uh, to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak. To win the weak, I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share its, in its blessings. Let me tell you this, it's not compromising. It's not you, you're going to do what they're doing. But it is how to reach out others. So Paul and Silas accepted the beating. They were be, beat up, uh, beaten up. And the Bible says because the reason is for the people to be reached out by the gospel. So the more you spend time with God, the more you will have the mind and heart, the heart of God. So our prayers need to be heard. Our lives 
that gives that give praises to God must be seen. And when those people hear and see, then they will witness the power of God through it. In verse 26 uh, in our text say, suddenly there was a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. So people around us will witness and experience the mighty hand of God when we pray. When God works, the foundation of the prison will be shaken. All prison doors will be open. Every chain will be broken. And, and all the people will be set free. Free from the bondage of sin and death. Free from the bondage of the enemy. And lastly, the second point that I want to, to make here is when we are isolated, make sure you are in tune with God. Stay in tune with God. Okay? Stay in tune with God. In verse 22, Okay, one of the things what, that we learned, you know, during this quarantine is that if you have many rooms in your house and you live like the, the farthest room, okay, farther from the Wi-Fi or, or, you know, modem or router, you experience bad reception and it's hard to connect. You know, Satan, uh, as much as possible, will isolate us in the darkest room of our life so that we don't see the light of life and be disconnected from God. Have you noticed this passage, especially in verse uh, 24? The jailer put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. You know, always keep yourself in God's business of saving people. It's either you you belong to those uh, to, to those to those crowds that were mentioned in verse twenty two. Did the crowd join in the attack against Paul and Silas? You know, who joined uh, attacking innocent people, or become part of those of whose heart. Uh, is for the salvation of many. If you are in Christ, God will make sure that your isolation will not lead you to disconnection. So be wise on what's going on with our, within our life right now. Make sure, making sure that uh, you always connected first with God and with others for them to be connected to God too. So we are like the router in our home, you know. This device uh, purpose is to connect the cell phones or any gadgets to the Wi-Fi. Okay, so God wants uh, to use us for others uh, to know the Lord. Because God, you know, God sometimes turn will turn our situations in the way that it's hard for us to understand because in every situation in life is an opportunity given by God. Like this quarantine that is going on, the isolation, you know, many people doesn't like it. They don't like it. And God uses this situation for us to reach out. People will have more time. People will stay at home. Cannot, they will not have any excuse or excuses that they cannot be reached out. Because they're busy, you know, touring or, you know, they're going to different places. But this is the time that God has appointed to each one of us. People are still isolated. Some of them are, they are fear to go out, especially what's going on around us. COVID-19, protesters, writing. God wants to use us to reach out those people who felt isolated. So when bad things happen to believers, to the believers of Christ, you know, this is, I don't know if 
what is your response to this but truly if we are in Christ and bad things happen what we do we give thanks to God we give thanks to God okay we give thanks to God for it and see the the goodness that will come out from it so when bad things happen to the unbelievers they become violent have you noticed what happened here in our passage in verse 27 when the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open what did he do he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because why because he thought the prisoners had escaped so if a person is not in tune with god he acts violently when facing troubles okay the people are panicking they don't know what to do because they are not led, led by the holy spirit it's either the ending ending their life is their way of thinking to end the problems while believers of Christ's way is to surrender everything to god when you are we when you don't know what to do you come to the lord's presence and ask for guidance direction and the right decision because paul and silas were fully in tune with god they become sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit how did they know that the jailer will about to kill himself in the in that dark cell as a matter of fact paul shouted at him to to call his attention and i believe it's it is fully the work of god the darkness that keeps all of them in the isolation results for the unsaved to feel unsafe the darkness that covers all of men that you can only hear before was the voices of praying and singing hymns now replaced was replaced with violent earthquake so what do you notice during and after the earthquake this will what you, we this what will you notice people are quiet why because they're waiting if there will be an aftershock have you noticed that so the aftershock here is uh, was the jailer who was shocked for what had happened he was shocked for what had happened we do we don't know if the jailer you know we don't know if the this jail uh, officer has another job why the funny thing here is the bible says he was sleeping during his shift but paul and silas and with other prisoners they believe and they know that it is it is god who answers the prayer of paul and silas but i believe personally god sent the earthquake in the middle of the that night for the jailer to be saved because the next day they will be released you know when when we are listening to the preaching of the word and we fell asleep because we are so tired with our job or maybe you you slept late and you only uh, have a few hours of sleep god cares for you god cares for you he wants you to be in tune with his word with his message and god wants to bless you truly when you are in tune with god the priority will be prioritized when god answers our prayer it is also for others to be reached out first the life that we have right now has a heart beat for the lost so Paul understood the punishment that the jailer was about to face. It is his life and his family's life. For the jailer is it's for the jailer it is it's better for him to die alone than to be punished with his family. That's why they never leave Paul and Silas they never leave when the door was opened when the uh, when their chains were were, were loose because they knew that that incident happened was act of god 
Amen. The jailer knew that it is the act of God, this violence, the, this violent earthquake, because it resulted for the prison cells to be open and the chains to, to get to get loosened. And what happened here is in, in the following verses in verse 29, verse 30, the jailer called for lights because he can't do anything about it. This is the work of God. This is the work of God. So he called for, the, for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. So I believe, like what I said earlier, the place was so dark. Okay. And then he then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? How many head of the family has concern for the safety of their family? How many believing fathers have concern with the salvation of their family member? How many uh, head of the family uh, has concern about their family members' spirit, spiritual health. So the question that was asked is a question of a person touched by God. The Lord led him to his senses that he needs a Savior. He needs a Savior. He needs a Savior. Amen? If you are, if you are in tune with God, God will give you wisdom to reach out for others. And Paul, this is what happened. Paul and Silas, who were still inside the cell, was brought out. And because the jailer now knew that the God that Paul and Silas serves or serve is the true living God who controls the nature, he approached them for his safety. So the task, let me remind you, church, the task that God has given us is to become fishers of men. Why do we still here on earth? Why are you still here on earth? John 4, 34 says, Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So what the food the, uh, what does the food do to you? For Jesus, he has only one food, and that is to do the will of his Father and to finish his work. May it be also our daily food, amen, that we will not live without it. So we need to stand in the truth of the Word of God by using our authority against the enemy. Amen. So Paul and Silas, they stand in the truth of the word of God and use their, end, uh, their authority against the enemy. But you know, this in, in, in the physical reality, it leads them into trouble. But in spiritual reality, what God did is he knows, he understands. Even though Paul and Silas didn't understand is what God is about to do in the life of that jail guard. So Paul and Silas has no, has, I mean, has, has one answer to that question. When the, jail, the jailer or the jail officer asked that question, what must I do to be saved? They have one answer and they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And you will be saved. And when the jailer here heard that, that, that answer, it says in Acts 16, 31 to 34, 
that they spoke. That's it? Okay. So if you open your Bible, it says in verse six, uh, 31, chapter 16, 31, they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household, then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his household were baptized. Amen. This is a revival. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy. You know, when you are in Christ, the fear will be replaced with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. Amen. What an amazing story of how God works in a way that we don't see. Paul and Silas, who are always in tune with God, brought the jailer and his household to know the Lord Jesus. And can you imagine, after they believe on that night, they were all baptized. Amen to that. That's a revival. People are getting saved. Amen. Jesus now, Jesus, now Jesus is their Lord and their Savior. That's like uh, Paul and Silas uh, serving. So you too can experience that, that same experience. God will lead you to the person who, in need, who is in need of him. And you will be amazed on the outcome of it. My challenge for you, my brothers and sisters right now. Spend more time with God. And keep in tune with him. Okay. But another question is this. Do you spend more time with God? And keep, your in, and keep yourself in tune with him. Your, your isolation can be used by God for others not to feel alone. Always remember these two things. And I will repeat. Spend time with God. Spend more time with God. And secondly, keep in touch with Him. From isolation to accommodation, from being alone now to where you belong. Say this to the person next to you. You are not alone. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. For your faithfulness, that when we see sometimes that we are just by ourselves, we thought that we are alone, but it's not true. You are always there next to us. You're on our side. You go before us. You cover us, Lord. You protected us. So truly, whatever happens in this world, we are insulated. We are protected. And we are secure. So dear God, we pray. As we learn that when we are alone, help us to use this time to spend more time with you in prayer and to give you praise. That let the people hear it and see it, Lord God. We too face many trials, testing, even sickness and diseases, Lord, we face it too like the non-believers. But the only difference is you gave us wisdom how to handle it and you give us a purpose why these things happen. So this morning we ask, dear God, that may you help us that during our isolation we will live wise that we will stay with you, connected, keep in tune with you, O oh God. And may you bless each one, Lord, our family, those people that we knew. Help us, use us to reach them out. Thank you, God. We commit to you everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. I hope you are blessed with the message of the Lord. And uh, Amen. 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 Amen.